Here's the question. What's going on inside the minds of top achievers that cause them to make extraordinary breakthroughs both personally and professionally? My name is Tim Schur, and I invite you to join me as we take a deep dive into the unconscious mind and discover how to transform your biggest dreams into a reality. Welcome to the How to Be Mesmerizing podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to How to Be Mesmerizing. It's Tim Schur, and we are live streaming in this special edition today with the legendary Dr. Robert Rome. Dr. Rome, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. Honored to be here with you and your audience. Oh, the honor is ours. So, so Dr. Rome is a he's a pretty big deal. He's been teaching the DISC model and personality assessment and the model of human behavior for a long time. He's had a PBS special that was spectacular. Uh, he's been in front of 2 million people with his teachings, and he is one of the experts in the world, the leading experts on uh, understanding uh, personality from the DISC perspective. And so uh, I'm just really excited that you're here today, and you're going to be a part of our third Legend Summit, which is super great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, it's always fun to be around people who are uplifting and positive and looking to how to make their life better. I you know, Zig used to say, I had the opportunity to work with Zig Ziglar for several years back in the 80s. And Zig used to say, you know, positive thinking won't make you do anything, but it will help you do everything better. And I think that's really, really true. Just having a positive attitude is nice. But, you know, I, I could say I'm real positive about doing surgery. I just don't know anything about it. So being positive is not really the key having good education, good information, good guidance, good, good uh, training is very important. You know, it's, knowledge is the key to having a successful life and knowing how to follow the right path, but doing it in a positive manner like you and so many others do is, is well worth uh, all of us to emulate. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It makes life more fulfilling. So being a student of success, if you're a student, you'll have success, right? And so you have done some pretty amazing work with helping people understand what the DISC model of behavior really is. And uh, and so let's talk about how you first got involved with it, your 12-year-old daughter. And, and so go ahead and tell that story for us, please. Well, it was uh, 1985, actually. Uh, my oldest daughter, Rachel, was 12 years old. I was living in Dallas, Texas, going to graduate school. And I have four daughters. Of course, they're all grown now. But back in 1985, Rachel was 12, and she was just so difficult. I, I, I couldn't understand. I didn't want to say she was mean. I didn't want to say she was she was um, rebellious. She was just difficult. And you know, I noticed the other three were not quite as difficult or challenging, and I didn't know what was going on. And a friend of mine was having dinner with us. He, would pa he was passing through town, and he had dinner. We went outside on my back porch after dinner, and I'll never forget. It was one of those serendipitous moments. You know, he looked at me, and he said, what's wrong with you? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're just not yourself. He said, you're normally full of life and energy. And he said, it's like you're depressed. I said, it's Rachel. And he said, what has she done? And I said, I don't know. And I tell people this, have you ever had a problem, but you didn't know what your problem was? That's your biggest problem of all. And I knew something was wrong. I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know if it was, if it was Rachel. I didn't know if it was me. I didn't know if it was both of us. I didn't just couldn't understand it. And she, we had already finished dinner. She was next door playing basketball with some other kids in the neighborhood. And he said, have he looked at me and he it was like a moment in time. He said, have you ever given her a personality profile assessment? And the way he said that was like he had been preparing to say that his whole life, you know, <laughs> and he said it so fast. I didn't even I didn't even catch it. I said, a what? He said a personality profile assessment. I said, I've never heard of that. What, what is that? And he said, well, they've mostly been used in business, but he said they're becoming much more popular. You know, I can hardly believe this was uh, 1985. That was a long time ago. 85, 95, oh, that's 36 years ago. Mm -hmm. Hardly believe it. Anyway, Rachel came home. He, he, I, when Rachel came home, he gave her the assessment. I watched her take it. She took it in 12, 15 minutes and finished and went back to play basketball. And he, he scored it while I was sitting there. And, and he held this up and it was the first assessment score I had ever seen. I didn't know how to read it. I didn't know what that meant, but he started talking to me about a D and an I 
and an S and, and a C personality. I I just held it up real quickly so everybody could see what I saw mm-hmm. in 1985. I didn't know what that even meant. Mm-hmm. And he looked at, he said, wow, she's, she's a high D. I said, what does that mean? He said, you know, dogmatic, nomineering, driving, demanding, determined, decisive, dictatorial, a little bit defiant, a doer. He started, and here's the crazy thing, Tim. He started explaining my daughter to me. I had spent 12 years with her. He spent 12 minutes with her and he understood (laughs) her better than I did. So for the next two hours, and this is my whole life changed. For the next two hours, he coached me on how to connect with my daughter. And one of the things he said that he, he looked at me, he said, was, do you ever have any trouble with her at bedtime? I said, yeah, every night it's a war. He said, I'm just curious. What do you say to her when, you, when it's time to go to bed? I said, well, I usually say, Rachel, you need to be in bed by 10 o'clock. I'll never forget the look on his face. He went, well, that's what you say to her? I said, yeah, she's 12 years old. She needs to go to bed. Yeah. He said, Robert, he said, when you say to a D, you need to be in bed by 10 o'clock. That may be what you say, but that's not what she hears. What she hears is you want to fight. And I said, <laughs> how do you get, do you want to fight? How do you need to be in bed? And he said, you don't understand D's. And, and see, again, I go back to this when I do training and teaching, you don't know what you don't know, but you can learn. And so I sat there for two hours listening to him, explain to me the D type personality. See, that's not my, number one trait. I'm, I'm primarily an I type personality, inspiring, inducing, influencing, interesting, impulsive, interactive. But he started explaining D's and he said this to me, one sentence, how could one sentence be so powerful? He said, you're going to have to learn to say the same thing in a different way. And then he spent two hours talking to me on how to, he coached me on how to connect with my daughter. He said, she needs challenges. She needs control. She needs to have a say in what she's doing. And he knew it for two hours. So the next night we were having dinner, he was gone. The next night, Rachel was sitting across and I thought, because I had been practicing this. Can you imagine? I had been practicing on how to talk to my daughter who I had been talking to for 12 years, yeah. but now I had do it, was doing it in a specific manner. So the next night we're having dinner. I can still see it, Tim. She was sitting across from me eating mashed potatoes and English peas. I don't know. I remember that. <laughs> and, and I said, Hey tiger. And that's been her nickname her whole life. As you can understand, I called her tiger before I even understood why I was calling her tiger. I said, Hey tiger, you can go to bed tonight. Anytime you want to, you're the boss, you're in charge. I'm turning it over to you. You can make it happen any way you want to Ten's the limit, but you're in control. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. She never even looked up. She said, okay. And the first thing that went through my positive mental attitude mind was this doesn't work. (laughs) You know, I just, I was thought the crazy thing is at 10 o'clock, she went in her room, shut her door, cut off her light and went to bed. And I honestly, I stood by the door and listened. I was amazed. (laughs) Two things happened that night. Number one, we went to bed peacefully. That that had never happened. And number two, and, and I always tell people, listen carefully. It was the first time I had ever consciously and deliberately talk to her in a way she could receive and understand and feel that she had D power, which was these like to control things. They like to be in charge. So when I, I tell people, do you see any difference in these two sentences? You need to be in bed by 10 o'clock or you can go to bed whenever you want to. You're the boss. You're in charge. I'm turning it over to you. You can make it happen anyway. By the way, it took me two hours to learn how to talk and say that it just rolls off my tongue now, but it took two hours to learn to say, you're in charge. You can do whatever you want to. I'm turning it over to you. You're the boss. You make it happen. Tends the limit, but it's up to you to do it however you want to. See, when I said that to her, what she heard was, I have choices. I have challenge. I have control. These love that they make great leaders. So that was the start. That's how it began. And I started working. Don't miss this. I started working on myself. If somebody had said to me, Rachel's not the problem. Rachel's a 12 year old little girl. You're the problem because you're the parent and you don't know how to work with her. You don't know how to talk to her. You know, I have five college degrees. I've learned more and more about less and less till I finally learned everything about nothing. Sometimes PhD stands for piled higher and deeper. (laughs) The truth of the matter is this until you understand and believe if I'm not the problem, there can be no solution. Then you're going to live your life as a victim. 
But if you believe, okay, I must have, I must be the problem because if this isn't working right, I, I see it's working right for others. We have come up with so many labels and it breaks my heart that we give kids, they have every problem in the world and therefore they have excuses. And when you have excuses, then it hinders you and hurts you from becoming all you were meant to be. So I didn't try to fix Rachel. I tried to fix myself. It's a long story that's still going on. Mm. And I see on my phone, Tiger calling me to this day, 36 years later, I brace myself because <laughs> here's what goes through my mind. Be fast, be quick, be short and be done because that's what D's like. But when my daughter Elizabeth calls me, she's a high S type, slow down, be nice. Hey, sweetie, how's my girl? Change the whole way you talk. So again, it boils down to one sentence, but it takes a lifetime to practice this. Learn to say the same thing in a different way. Depend on who you're talking to. Learn to communicate. That's what sales is all about. The success of sales is not dependent upon the buyer. It's dependent upon the one who's doing the selling to sell correctly and right to connect with their customer, to make them feel valued and appreciated. So it's an ongoing, it's like an onion. Everybody's heard this. You peel a layer off, you find another layer. You know, I've been doing this 36 years. I started my business in 1991, about six years later, because it just, it really, I backed into it mm -hmm. because I was speaking so much and sharing this. And I just saw audiences hunger and thirst after I want to get along with people in my family. You know, uh, I really believe everyone has a Rachel in their life. It may be their husband, their wife, their boss, their uh, subordinates, their employees, their uh, children, but it's somebody we just, I love them. I just don't like them. Mm -hmm. I love them, but I can't get along with them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's wrong with them. And we even think this way, you know, if I could make you to be a little more like me, you'd be a lot happier and a lot better off. <laughs> And that's just not true. Yeah. What we have to learn to do is connect with people in a way that feels right to them. It feels good to them. It feels accepting to them. And it takes time to learn to do this. But again, as I said earlier, knowledge is power. And when you understand what's going on, then you can make some adjustments. And I'm still on the journey of, if I can say, as we say down here in the South, I'm still trying to fix myself to become all the person I was meant to be. Mm, wow. Outstanding. That's so good. You have a lot, uh, you list your um, characteristics every time you say a letter. So what is, what goes with C? The yeah, letter yeah. C. Well, we have four primary traits. The D is the dominant. That's, I try to tell people just, you know, if you can remember one word, D is dominant. That's their number one, because dominant means I like to be in charge. I like things to happen, be a leader, be a follower, get out of my way. I have things to do place to go and people to see. Come on, get with the program. That's the D. The I is inspiring. <clears throat> they like to talk. They're the star of the show, fun and excitement. They're the enthusiasm. They're the energy in any organization. They're the fun. They're the, the no business like show business. They're the star of the show, fun and excitement. And the S type, we can do this in D-I-S-C. S is supportive. That's my daughter, Elizabeth, the supportive type. They, they just want to help you. That Can we just get along with each other? They don't like conflict. Uh, I, I want to make sure we all love each other. We all help each other. And if you need anything, I, I'd like to help. They make good school teachers. They make good nurses. They make any se secretaries, anything that's in a support role. They, they're drawn to that. They love that. They don't like the, they, they like the shadows. They don't like the spotlight. You know, they would prefer to just come alongside and do anything they could to help you. And then the C, in, the C word, as you ask about, is cautious. Uh, we say cautious, calculating, concern, critical thinking, cognitive, correct. But the C types, number one words, cautious. As a matter of fact, I've even come up with four uh, methodologies to help people remember this. And these are real simple. They're just examples. These are like sandpaper. They're, they're very important, but they're a little rough. I mean, sandpaper is a real good tool to have in your toolbox. You just don't use it all the time. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eyes, <clears throat> eyes are confetti. You just throw them up in the air and they go everywhere. You know, <laughs> and, and when you have a ticker tape parade, confetti is flying down from the sky, showing fun, excitement, reward, 
uh, anything that has to do with making sure that we have excitement and, and uh, lively interaction with everybody. It's, it's the dance. It's the party. It's the show. You know, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. I, I, many times I think we would all be better off if we're just a little happier. It makes our life better. That's the I type. The S, if I had to use a substance or an example, they would be water. Mm. Water goes with everything. Water refreshes you. Water, most of the world is made out of water. Water is the source of life. Most of our body, I understand, is made up of water. In the So water is the, the element, the chemical, <clears throat> the substance that just makes everything better. And then the C's would be a dictionary. What are, why do we have a dictionary? You better double check it. Is this right? How do you know this is right? Did you spell check that? Did you make sure this is correct? How do you, where'd you get your information? Is that the British spelling or is that the English spelling? I mean, it goes on and on and on. And let me just say this too, if I haven't made this clear, this is the most important thing I would say on this call. This is the most important thing I would say in training. Everybody has some of all four of these traits to a greater or lesser degree. And my strongest trait, of course, is my inspiring trait. And then my second trait's dominant. I like to make things happen and be in charge. My third trait's supportive. Be nice. Be nice. It helps your marriage. It helps with your family. It helps with your business. Come on, be nice. You can be nice. Don't be mean and nasty, hateful and ugly. Be nice. And then my the one I've had to work on the most is my C trait because that's double check, spell check. What time does this start? Do you have a reservation number? Do you have a confirmation number? Is Do you know where you're supposed to be right now? What time does this start? How long does this last? See, just talking about that wears me out, but I know it's important and I've been working on it for over 30 years. So I'm a little bit better, but I'm still working on my C trait. And that's the beauty of this. Everybody in general, I've discovered about 80% of the population have two traits they're pretty good at and two traits they need to work on a little bit. And it gives us a lifelong project to try to become a better person and more successful at anything that we're doing. Oh, that was a mesmerizing breakdown, Robert. I mean, oh, that was really superb. And I love how the sandpaper and the confetti and <laughs> I mean, everybody that's listening to this or watching this right now is they know what their dominant uh, you know, feature is or characteristic is. So I was definitely the confetti. <laughs> that was really great. When I'm talking to my wife, I definitely have to shift into cautious, you know, and, um, and the dictionary, you know, make sure that I'm being very specific when I'm speaking. <laughs> yeah. That was well, amazing. My wife, she's a real high S type. Uh -huh. And on this program here, I know I'm loud and I'm, I'm talkative and I'm a little bit forceful. Uh -huh. But when I'm with my wife, boy, I tone that down. Because yeah. she she told me one time when she said, when you talk to me real loud and real fast, it scares me. I feel like you're yelling at me and you're upset about something. Yeah. Well, that's the last thing I want to communicate. So, right. again, if I'm not the problem, there can be no solution. So I say to myself, what do I need to do to fix me when I'm talking to my wife, April? And yeah. that's calm down, talk softer, don't butt in, look into her eyes, let her talk and make sure I communicate. I really care about you. Thank you. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And see, I have to fix me to make her feel or create. I should say I can't make anybody feel anything, but we can create environments. We can create climates in the way we act or behave with others to cause them to feel loved and accepted. Mm, so much wisdom, you know, always looking at, at what can I do to show up differently instead of how do I change them? And when we do show up differently, that is what influences them. Yeah, so much wisdom. Now, you have a great story about being recruited to work with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So oh, yeah. let's talk about that big fancy uh, World Series ring you got on your finger there. So tell, share that story because it's amazing. All right, real quick. Uh, in 1995, the Atlanta Braves won the World Series here in Atlanta. And it was a big deal, the only time they've ever won it. And in 1996 the Arizona Diamondbacks got a franchise and it just so happened that my friend Don Mitchell, who was the chief scout for the Atlanta Braves got hired. Anybody who's ever seen the movie Moneyball kind of understands how this works. You know, different people have 
uh, can get bought and sold by different baseball organizations. But the Diamondbacks hired, they purchased and bought Don Mitchell, and he went on as the chief scout. And Don, oddly enough, Don and his wife had been through one of my trainings that we did for married couples. So Don called me and he said, I want you to help me put this team together. And I first thing that went through my mind was, well, I played little league baseball, so I probably ought to know a whole lot about putting together a professional baseball team. I said, Don, I don't know anything about that. He said, no, you don't understand. He said, we'll find the players. He said, I want you to help me to get all D's on this team. Hmm. And I said, Don, that's a bad idea. I said, you, you aren't there 25 players on a team? He said, yeah. I said, you want 25 D's on the same team? I said, they'll kill each other. I said, you can't put 25 D's on the same team. He said something to me I had never heard before. Again, he had baseball knowledge. Yeah. He said to me, baseball is not a team sport. Huh? And I didn't even have a category for that. I thought, aren't they called baseball teams? I said, mm -hmm. what do you mean baseball is not a team sport? He said, you're getting this mixed up. Football, soccer, basketball are team sports. Think about it. A team is what they're all doing all the time. He said, baseball is more like golf or tennis. It's an individual sport. He said, what goes on in the left field has nothing to do with what goes on on first base. He said, they go up to bat alone. They have yeah. their own statistics. He started explaining baseball to me in a way I had never seen it before. Yeah. So he said, this will work. He said, I want 25 fighters. If anybody saw the movie Moneyball, there's one sentence in there that explains what I'm talking about. Brad Pitt looked at someone and said, you don't understand me. I hate to lose more than I like to win. That's what he was talking about. Don said, I want fighters. I had 600 baseball players that we worked with. We did personality profile assessments on 600. Went through the first time and eliminated 400 because they weren't high Ds. I had 200 left. Then we had the different positions, pitcher, catcher, uh, first, second, third, short, left, center, right field. And we had them on big whiteboards in their uh, clubhouse in there in, at uh, the Diamondback Stadium. It was the Chase One Stadium at the time. It's since been sold. A bank, it was the Bank One Ballpark, and then it's owned by Chase. Anyway, I, I have a, a picture of what we ended up with. We created mm -hmm. a composite graph, and it looked like this. And wow. if you see that, it was those, there's 25 dots. Every one of those wow. was a different player, including Randy Johnson and Kirk Schilling. And it was just looking at that should be scary. Yeah. But it's what happened because baseball is not a team sport and they're all individuals and they're all fighters. See, here, here's what, here's the way, it, this is what a D lives with. And I admire this, but it's a little scary. Here's what a D lives with. If you won, that was just this time because you're going to have to fight me again because it ain't over until I win. That that's, that's part of their makeup. And, and that's good in certain environments in the military, in sports, in high achievers. It just doesn't work well in marriage or raising children or even in business in the corporate world. You, you'll chase business off instead of bring it in. Anyway, make a long story short. They went on the field in 1997 Took a year to put the team together in 96. 97 was their first year on the team. 98, 99, 2000, and 2001, they won the World Series. And there the baseball's on the four corners. It shows 2001 world champions. Wow. And it also says on one side of the ring, fastest ever. The ring, solid gold. And it says fastest ever, they, meaning they won the World Series faster than any team in baseball history. And the truth of the matter is this. We were five years ahead of the movie Moneyball. I think their methodology is a little, maybe a little more uh, technical because they do statistical analysis. We Ours is a little more subjective because we did it based on the personality of the players. Yeah. But it was still powerful and they still won it. And I... Joe Gargiola Jr. was the general manager. And uh, after they won the World Series... Somebody told me, they said, they're not going to give you a World Series ring. Those are valuable. They're sacred. Only the players and coaches get them. That's what every baseball player wants. That's what every baseball player is playing for, a World Series ring. They'll never give that to you. 
So I called Joe Garagiola Jr. and I said, hey, Joe, just wanted to follow up about my World Series ring. He said, what's your ring size? That's all he asked me. And they sent it to me. And I think it's so funny, not to be unkind, but I always tell this story. I saw Barry Bonds being interviewed. They said, Barry Bonds, you're the most valuable player in all of Major League Baseball seven times. What is it like to be the most valuable player? And he dropped his head and he said, well, I'm very honored and it's been great. But he said, what I really wanted was a World Series ring. And I was watching that interview and I thought to myself, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. No offense. To Barry. <laughs> wow. That's extraordinary. That is amazing. I could talk to you for days and days and days. So you have a new program that's very exciting. It's a certified disc profile analyst program where yes. people can go and and uh, and learn all this extraordinary uh, information that you're teaching. So how can people learn more about you and that program? Thank you. That's great. We call it our CDPA, which stands for Certified Disc Profile Analyst. It's an entry level. It's not very expensive. It's an entry level program where you can start learning about the DISC model of human behavior. My two PBS specials are on there. We do a lot of coaching and training and we teach you, number one, how to take an assessment. Number two, how to read your own assessment. See, I know I'm an IDSC. I can explain that. That's the thing that just electrifies me and, and gives me so much energy and, and, and strength and purpose and power is if I can line the whole human race up all 7 billion plus people. And if I could speak their language and give them an assessment, I can coach them, guide them, train them, teach them to understand how to understand their own personal life and how to get along with other people better and how to be more successful in any endeavor in life. So we created this program where you understand, first of all, yourself, you take an assessment, then you begin to like these charts I'm showing, how do you read one? How, do you, how can you give an assessment to another person in your family, significant other, business? And then you can begin to coach them. And then you can become part of our team. It's an entry-level program. We have a CDPA, Certified Disc Profile Analyst. And the way you find that online is just go to www.personalityinsights.com slash CDPA, which stands for Certified Disc Profile Analyst, CDP slash CDPA and all the information's there. We have other programs. We have our pathway programs where we have about 30 different programs where people can learn how to do training, whether it's for marriage, business, coaching, team building, leadership, great topics that how can you be a leader if you don't understand people? How can you be team build a team? You know, uh, Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, said the secret's getting people on the bus and getting the right people on the bus and the right seats on the bus. How can you do that if you don't understand personality information? We have a level one training, basic uh, certification. We have a level two. We have a speaker's boot camp. We even have a master trainer program. But again, you know, you can't go from zero to 101 leap. We So we created this program. It's fairly new where people can just have an entry level to start the process that we're talking about today of understanding themselves, understanding other people, and being able to adjust and adapt themselves to build better teams, to create better relationships. So it's personalityinsights.com slash CDPA. Outstanding. Wow. Dr. Robert Rome. Robert, that's, this was just absolutely amazing. I love it. I recommend everybody go check that information out and, and your website because this is extraordinary. And I'm so excited to uh, see you again on October 9th for our Legends Summit. And that's going to be uh, amazing as well. So thank you so much for being uh, as mesmerizing as I knew you would be and for being on the show today. <laughs> thank you. The honor was all mine. I appreciate you and all the great work you do in your audience. I just hope that uh, while we're live in this world, we can make a, a difference, as Zig used to say, a difference for the good, the pure, and the positive to help other people have a better life. Mm, outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's Tim. You ever wonder why so many talented, hardworking entrepreneurs and business owners struggle with inconsistent self-belief or high stress or procrastination or self-sabotage? 
Well, the answer may surprise you and the solution is already inside of you. I've been searching for the answers to this for decades and I found them and I put it into a new program called The Power of Your Unconscious Mind, Mental Secrets for Accelerating Success. And because you're a listener, I want to give you a free VIP copy. Head over to PowerMindsetProgram.com. That's PowerMindsetProgram.com and grab your copy today.